Hey everyone, it's your girl Anissa. I'm coming to you from behind my camera for a change because these shoes are the star of the show. I pretty much got this idea from seeing someone at work do some fun patches on their checkered vans. And I remembered I had these pair of slip-ons that I haven't worn in forever because I've just been wearing like the lace-up vans. So I got the cool idea to revamp my vans in my own way and make something super fun and expressive and so on trend right now. So I'm gonna show you how, and you guys, it's so affordable to do this, it's not even funny. So you don't have to go splurge on that designer look of slip-ons with patchwork, you can do it yourself and it's gonna be totally custom. So go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. I know you're gonna like it and get ready to DIY with me. We're gonna jump into the tutorial. All right, you guys, so we are set up for some DIY fun tonight. And um, like in the clip before, we're just going to be kind of um, sprucing up an old pair of Vans of mine. You can use a brand new pair, of course. However, this tutorial is definitely something inspired by something I saw on um, someone who works with me and how they did their Vans. But I was just thinking of a way to refresh a pair that I'm not really using as much as I used to. So for today, I grabbed some really cute patches off of Amazon. Um, it's a pack that I'll link down be below, but there are so many different options. It's like a pack of 14 and it only came out to $8 and like 99 cents. So just a really good value for what you're getting. They came in like this. I have opened it. It didn't come with any instructions, which is just the one con of buying this pack. You just have to reference the instructions that are posted in the description. But it has lots of pretty little sequined patches that you can just use to create your own look. So that's going to be one thing that we definitely need. You could get some without sequins if you want, but I thought this would give my vans a little bit more glam. And if you know me and you've been on this channel, you know I like glam. You also need an iron. This is just like a little mini travel size one. The last little tool I'm going to show you is super optional, but this is from Tulip. I got this at Michael's. It's just an instant fabric color spray, and this is in Silver Shimmer. So I, but I just want to add this into the mix and give it like that kind of glam street art flair. I'm going to go ahead and get started and apply the glitter. If you want to tape this down just to keep it really clean and neat, you can and just use like a painter's tape. However, again, I don't really care about that. I want to have that cool street art feel something a little bit more undone, but also glamorous. And most of it, I'm gonna concentrate on the front part anyways. So what I'm gonna do is just lay down a paper towel because the fabric spray will get on things. So you just have to be very, very careful. You wanna give it just a good shape. Just like you're spray painting. And I'm just concentrating everything up here, like I said. So I'm just gonna give it a, just a little bit of a whirl. Just like that. You only need to let this dry for like 30 minutes and then you can work on the fabric a little bit more. But I can already tell you from when I placed this, just having something to help this pop through is super helpful. So now you can see that little hint of shimmer. Now add it to that background just to brighten it up a bit. We're gonna let this dry for 30 minutes and then we'll come back to the rest. Okay, so now these are ready to be worked on. The first thing I'm gonna do is stuff the shoe with the sock so I have like a much more firm surface to press on the um, patches. Now I'm going to pick out which patches I want to use and just lay them on here and see if I like the placement first before I adhere them. So cute, they have like little nail polish. I kind of really like that, that's so cute. That was a more like glam theme. 
definitely want this to be a little bit more in a prominent area. So everything's pretty much placed exactly where I want it. The directions for everything is within the description of the product on the Amazon page. So pretty much you just want to have your iron on the non-steaming setting. So just on your regular fabric setting that's safe for cotton. Um, then what you want is a pressing cloth. I don't have like a formal pressing cloth. So I'm just going to use this scrap piece of black fabric. It's a cotton base. So again, it's nothing with rayon or polyester within it just to protect the applique while I'm pressing it down. Also too, when we're applying the heat to it, you want to press versus iron. So we're going to see me do that in action right now. I'm going to start with this one since this one's just one applique versus the two that I'm going to have to work with right here. I'm going to start on the center part. I'm now kind of just seeing where everything's laying out and I know I need to touch up on these corners here. This feels pretty secure, so I'm just going to keep pressing until it's to my exact liking. Alright, so we got one finished. We're going to let it just sit. I'm going to start with the lower one and then we'll go back in and do the last bit. give this a little bit more structure I'm just gonna stuff an old washcloth into here and I'm gonna reset where I want this now that I see where this has landed I think this is like the perfect positioning for the second applique Now we're looking at the final product of these little appliques being applied to it. I think it already looks so cute, super dreamy. It looks kind of like designer, but my own. Um, and I really do see that like the smaller one that's a little bit more towards the tip where the surface is a little bit smoother and not so rounded is much easier. But this was totally doable. I just had to like go over the corners a lot more. Like the center pretty much went down immediately. And I experienced the same thing too. I also think too because these appliques are a little bit bigger, you're going to have that challenge. But again, you just want to lay it down, kind of go over like your main area and then go back around your corners. The one thing that's kind of bothering me is that this has a little bit of negative space. I also love to write XOXO on a lot of things. So what I'm going to take is just this fabric pen um, right here that I've gotten from Michaels as well. And just do kind of like my little signature that I like to do there. And I think that'll pull everything together. I really like the fact that all of these patches look like they would be put on a pair of shoes and making a statement. So just with this. Just like that. And I'll go over it again. Okay, you guys. So this is the finished product. They're still doing some setting. I added another little XOXO over here just as another signature to it. And they look super graphic. Exactly the look I was going for. 
Um, of course, I had to do a major XOXO there and then loving this perfume bottle. Super, it just feels very like Chanel-esque mixed with like street stuff. I actually have a tattoo like this, so that's another thing that kind of just, it makes it more me, you know, like I'm, I could ramble on forever, but I won't. Um, so I can't wait to wear these. I'll definitely be posting pictures on my Instagram. Don't forget to follow that at Lipstick and Anissa. Super simple. And don't forget to give this a video a thumbs up and also subscribe for more fashion and beauty fun. And then we'll see you on the flip side.